Was Abraham justified by faith or works? Or both? <laughs> Turn in your King James Bible to the book of Romans, chapter 4. Pause the video, go get a Bible and look it up. You need to read along. Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So, was Abraham justified by works or faith in this passage? Well, you'd say, well, by faith, right? Keep your hand there and go over to James chapter 2. It's very important to compare Scripture with Scripture. James chapter 2. And verse 20, down through verse 24. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Hmm. Was not Abraham our father justified by works? But it says over Romans chapter 4, it's by faith, not of works. Here it's by works. Do we have a contradiction? Nope. There are no co contradictions in the King James Bible, unless you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Then the Bible contradicts like crazy. You see, if you try to reconcile this, what's going on here, in the book of James with Pauline epistles and try to make them teach the same thing, you're going to have a real big problem. But see, it's a very important thing to illustrate here. Let's continue reading in James chapter 2. Uh, verse 21, Was not Abraham our father justified by works, when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? Hmm, we'll get back to that. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Okay? Now, look back there at verse uh, 22. Seest thou how faith wrought with, work, with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Now, think about what Abraham did. God tells him, Sac sacrifice your son Isaac upon the altar and he gets the wood and everything and he goes up there to sacrifice his son and his son says father and he you know yes what is it and he says paraphrasing here um i see here's the wood and everything but where's the lamb for the burnt offering and he says god himself shall provide a lamb you know very prophetic significance there but uh would it have made sense for abraham to be there and just say hey um isaac god told us that um he has to, you know, we have to have a sacrifice over there. So we're just going to believe by faith that God's going to take care of it. God himself shall provide a lamb for the sacrifice, son. So let's just stand here and watch. No. Um, would it have been good if Abraham would have just said, uh, don't worry about it, son, I'm going to have to kill you now. And, and the angel of the Lord says, hey, stop, Abraham. Oh, it's okay. It's all right. You don't have to help me here. I'll just, I'll take care of it myself and, and kills Isaac. No. Uh, so what did Abraham have to have? He had to have both there. Faith that God himself would provide a lamb for the sacrifice, but works being willing to go up and take his son and put him in the altar and willing to kill him. Faith and works. Is that the setup that we have today? No. No. So why on earth would one of these hyper-dispensationalists or non-dispensationalists, they both, they're both kind of wing nuts, some of these people, these uh, hyper-grace or free grace, whatever, they'll try to say that uh, salvation's always been by faith alone. And the non-dispensationalists, they'll say the same thing. Salvation's always been by faith alone. You know, when you get right down to it, a lot of these heretical groups really just believe the same thing. They just use a lot of very confusing language and whatever else. And you really boil it down, it's the same thing that they really believe. Very interesting. But you see, these people, they'll try to use Romans chapter 4 to prove that salvation was by faith alone in the Old Testament. There were no works involved. But you compare Scripture with Scripture, there were works involved. In fact, the works were what made the faith perfect. You see? Uh, so was Abraham justified by, justified by faith or works? The answer is both. Why? It was another dispensation. 
It's not the same thing that we're under today. And of course, you know, if they were all, if that's uh, the same as New Testament salvation or whatever else, and that was his salvation back then, then everybody else from then on had to, God put them through the same thing and taking their only son and putting them on the altar and he's going to, you know, sacrifice them? No. See, there are types in the Old Testament and non-dispensationalists will run to those types and say it's the same thing. But you look at the type, it's a lamb being slain, but it doesn't say anything about that lamb being buried and rising from the dead. Don't fall for the non-dispensational heresy out there and this free grace junk and whatever else that seeks to, to eliminate any kind of works salvation that's throughout the Bible and into the future. Uh, there are no works for salvation today. That is true. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, oh yeah, there's works salvation then, along with faith. At least at the beginning. By the time you hit Matthew chapter 25, the judgment of the nations, Jesus Christ comes back. He doesn't judge him for one second about faith. Not for one second. You visited the fatherless and the widows and those in prison. and you, Where's the faith? It's not there. And then you go into the millennial kingdom and, or the thousand year reign of Christ, if you want to say it that way. And you go into that thing and there's absolutely no faith at all connected to salvation because Jesus Christ is physically on the earth. But you see, these people don't want you to know that. And why? Because they're trying to get people ready to go into the time of Jacob's trouble because they're going in there themselves. And then they can say it's faith alone. doesn't matter. You have eternal security. There's always been eternal security and there always will be eternal security. You can't lose your salvation. And people will say, really? Well, I don't want to lose my job. I don't think it'd be God's will for me to lose my job. And after all, I wouldn't be able to feed my wife and children. And then I'd be worse than an infidel and denying the faith. And so I better just go ahead and take the mark. And after all, I can't lose my salvation because I'm born again. I'm sealed. You see what I'm saying? That's what's really going on here. All these false teachers out there are trying to get people ready to take the mark. I pray you don't get deceived by these people. And I pray you get away from them. Um, you don't have a responsibility to watch any of these heretics out there that try to tell you, that try to use Romans chapter 4 to prove that salvation's always been the same, uh, that there are no dispensational changes. Uh, I'd get away from those liars and deceivers.